Across 65 million years of evolution, predators have chased prey. From inconspicuous ancestors came the cats, fast specialists. And close on their heels were the dogs, long distance runners and pack hunters. Bone crunching scavengers plundered the scraps from this table. Yet the same ancestors of these wolves went down a different path. Some became the largest and most powerful of today's killers. But these killers eat berries too. This is their story. In the spring of 1869, much of the chatter around London Zoo was of a new arrival. Shipped from the Himalayas, it was said to be an odd combination of a raccoon and a bear. The zoo's llamas were hardly worth a second glance, compared to the bizarre little firefox or red panda. But all was not well. Zoo superintendent Papa Bartlett had been trying to feed his latest charge fresh meat, but it had refused to eat and was now very weak indeed. Almost in desperation, he took the starving panda into the zoo's gardens. After a few unsteady steps, it lunged for the flower bed, and there, to everyone's surprise, began to eat. The new carnivore, Papa Bartlett realized, was a vegetarian. The same confusion may well have surrounded its black and white namesake from China. The two pandas have a lot in common. Both are vegetarians. Both have a sixth finger or thumb to grasp the bamboo better. But being descended from meat eaters, they have the wrong digestive system for low energy vegetables. To survive, they have to bulk load their greens. The giant panda confounded the Victorians. Today, we know it's simply a carnivore that's become an unexpected specialist vegetarian. It's the least adaptable modern member of two surviving carnivore families the bears and the raccoons, who've both kept their nutritional options open. The story begins 38 million years ago. At that time, in the forests of subtropical Eurasia, strange dog-like hunters roamed. They were to evolve through time into three different families, each a star player in this story. The raccoons, the bears, and the bear dogs. These fearsome hunters were the dominant dog-like carnivores of the Northern Hemisphere for 10 million years. The bear dogs, as their name suggests, had many things in common with modern bears and dogs. They were strong. They ran after their prey. Like the bears, their large size protected them. And they were probably the first carnivores to live as families in dens.
But a compromise of design as well as name, they were to go extinct. The dogs had outpaced them. And the bears outweighed them. Their extinction meant that, from the same dog-like ancestors, only two families of vegetarian carnivores now remained, the raccoons and the primitive bears. 35 million years ago, they were mainly meat-eaters, but then a new, omnivorous bear appeared. In the Asian forests, small, arboreal bears give us an insight into the lives of those primitive ancestors. The dogs slicing and crunching teeth have been traded in for broad, flat, grinding surfaces. Sun bears are the smallest of the family. Strongly curved claws and large paws with naked soles make them more at home in the trees. They are true omnivores, eating fruit, insects and small mammals. A bee's nest full of honey is irresistible for any bear. Raking claws of another small bear, the sloth bear, tear open the refuge of its insect prey. It's an unusual bear, a specialist, feeding almost exclusively on termites. Using its lips and long tongue to form a tube, the sloth bear blows away the debris and then sucks up the termites like a shaggy vacuum cleaner. These small bears have a lot in common with their primitive ancestors because they've stayed in the forests. But others didn't. Twelve million years ago, the climate suddenly changed. And so did the story of the bears. Giant, carnivorous running bears evolved to capitalize on the open spaces being created. An awesome branch of the family, they invaded North America, diversified, and then ran on to overwhelm the carnivores in South America. They flourished here until about 10,000 years ago. The spectacle bear still lives in South America and is the only direct descendant of those primitive bears. It's regained some of their ancient arboreal skills and becomes smaller again. Unlike their strictly carnivorous ancestors, they're opportunists and remarkably adaptable. If you can't get your own lunch, stealing someone else's is an effective option. It's that sort of adaptability which helped spectacle bears to survive. All the rest of today's bears came from a single ancestor which evolved after another dramatic cooling of the world's climate. A cooling that revolutionized the lives of all the then carnivores. Ursus minimus, small, as its name suggests, spawned all but one of today's bears, and they're anything but small. For black bears, now large and ponderous, thieving is still an effective option. 